Oh, welcome back to the Snakes here on OTP 23. We are here at the offseason. We just finished the playoffs. We just saw who won the playoffs. The Rays won the World Series. We made the playoffs for the first time in this series. And uh, now we are going to be looking at heading into the offseason and trying to trying to continue build upon on what we have and hopefully be an even better team next season because we don't want to take a step backwards. We are trying to, to be a consistent competitive team here. So if we hop into our mail here, first thing I'm seeing is that uh, in Double A, the premier pitcher in Double A this season in the Texas League was Tommy Finnegan, who put up a very solid season, apparently, or very weird season. This guy won premier pitcher just for the month? Okay, no, it was just the month. Okay, just the month of September. I was like, this guy had the best season in Double A? That's wild. So yeah, I guess he finished the year with a good, uh, finished September with a good month. But uh, Tommy Finnegan, he was a guy we drafted in round 17 at Ocean City, New Jersey. Shout out South Jersey. Low work ethic guy, but he's been in the system here. Uh, put up a weird year where he had a good R war, but he had a exactly zero war. Uh, good ERA plus, bad fit minus. Not really a uh, prospect, but, you know, he, he is in the system. Uh, we also had uh, Anthony Cole, who was the best batter in the PCL. I got a high ankle sprain after four weeks, but he is interesting because he is up in a AAA right now because he was good in AA and he was good in AAA. He's a guy who's possibly going to be a decent uh, get on base sort of player. Like I said last time, you know, third base, maybe get some time at first base too, but not really anything aside from that. Interesting player to have around. He was an 11th round pick for us in 2023. We also have a couple options to decide, Pablo Lopez being one of them, 14.2 million. Do we want to bring him back? He just came off his best season for us. He is 30, though, and we are trying to, you know, possibly have a decent amount of money to spend. So I feel like we can get what Pablo Lopez gave us, but I don't know. Do we want to bring him back? Because he was good for us, but he was only good when we... When we limited him to the 95, I believe, innings it was. Take a look at the pitching staff here. Yeah, 95 innings, or 95 uh, pitches. And I feel like we can get similar production, maybe. I mean, it's not like his ERA was too great. He's basically around the league average when it comes to ERA plus and fit minus. A little bit better both ways. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't feel like, what is it, 14 million that he's going to be uh, the option? Yeah, fourteen million. I don't. I don't think we want to bring him back for that because I would like to be able to spend a decent amount of money here in free agency. So I'm thinking that he might be on his way out this season. We'll come back to this a little bit later. We can also see that our fan loyalty has increased to below average. It's no longer like down in the dumps. Now it's just below average. We have a new budget. Uh, if we take a look, like I just showed. We now have the 25th budget. I believe it was like 28th, and we have the 21st payroll, and this is before we do any trades or anything like that. So we do still have like 13 million, but once again, that is because uh, we keep this at zero. So that's, you know, all the money we have to allocate to this and this as well. So 13 million is definitely not an ideal number to have. Oh, yes! Rysel Iglesias retired! We don't have to worry about paying him now. At least I don't believe so. So his his contract comes off the books for us. That's very good. We don't have to worry about him. He realized that he stinks. But uh, our third base coach retired. The Belgian man has retired, so we have to replace him. Contract extended. It always does because we have it on Campy Fired. And we're going to have to replace some minor league coaches, but I didn't know that. And if we take a look at the prospect list here, Nelson Pineda is the number 10 prospect in baseball. Uh, I clicked on the wrong thing. Nelson Pineda, he was good in rookie ball this season. So we're just going to go straight ahead. I don't know why it's on OSA, <clears throat> but we're going to go straight ahead and just put him into Class A for next season so he gets a full season in the big leagues. And uh, hopefully he can, he can continue to keep developing here after two seasons of rookie ball that he just had. We actually have three players on the batter's list. Pineda, Bobby Dahl is the 16th hitter. He was our first round pick, second overall in this past year's draft at a Howard College. Uh, he was, looks like he pitched an inning. 
Wait, he only pitched? No, he hit two. Okay, he hit two. He was a little bit less than league average. Uh, struck out a ton. But, I mean, he's, you know, he was very very young. First in the big leagues. We're not panicking because he wasn't setting the world on fire in rookie ball here. But uh, I'm probably going to be limiting him so he doesn't pitch because we don't really want him pitching. He's not... He's not somebody who's going to be a pitcher. He's, you know, maybe he could be a reliever, but I mean, even at that, we, we want him for his bat. But, uh, yeah, so he is the 16th prospect. And we also have Jack Lausch, who is a 12th round pick for us in 2022. And he's kind of just come out of nowhere. And he is in, if we take a look at his stats here, he was in high A for two years. First year in high A, wasn't very good. Pretty bad, actually. And stayed in high A. He was okay, has like a bench piece. Or no, he was okay starting, and then he came up to double A. Wasn't too great. Repeated double A uh, in 2025. Uh, was pretty good. Was actually really good. 143 WRC plus. Came up the triple A this season. Wasn't good. So if this continues, we might be in for a good season here as his age 23 year. As he's the 53rd prospect in baseball. And he has actually boosted his uh, potential ratings here quite a bit, according to my scout. He's a high work ethic guy. OSA is pretty high on him as well. So possible interesting player. He is a lefty bat. We have way too many of those. But uh, interesting either trade piece or guy to actually have at the big league roster. Seems like he could hit for a decent amount of power. So definitely a guy we'll be keeping our eyes on here. And also, I did want to mention that our season goals here, or these are our new goals. Okay, yeah, those are our news goals. He wants to improve the draft, draft record. Uh, he's very happy with the long term. Increase attendance. Uh, upgrade a position. Team record. Oh, no, these were the goals from last. I'm, could, I'm pretty sure he... Uh, yeah, he had to bring more of your drafted players to your team. By 2028, he wants. And uh, this year, we basically just had Tamar Johnson of guys who we only drafted. And he was not good for us. So Jack Lausch would absolutely allow us to have uh, multiple guys who we drafted up in the big leagues here. Jack Lausch, that is. And then if we scroll down to the pitcher side of things, we have three guys on here too. Sterling Jewell, who we're very aware of. The Australian who's still in the international complex. And then we've got two guys who I believe uh, Jesus here is somebody, yeah, he's a scouting discovery we got in 2024, who's been, uh, who my scout likes quite a, quite a bit, finesse pitcher, low work ethic, don't like that, was not good in rookie ball this season, but uh, we'll probably repeat rookie ball and see if he can improve upon that. And then we also have uh, this fellow, Tommy Molsky, who I'm not, never mind, I can't read. This guy's from Atlanta, I thought that's in Arizona. I was going to say, I don't remember taking this guy, but uh, he's... He's not in our system. He's in Atlanta's system. That's why. We only have two pitchers listed, and that's Jesus and Sterling Jewell. So just while we're looking at the salary page here, just some ideas of what we're possibly going to be doing here heading into this offseason. So getting value out of, you know, starters who aren't as valuable, maybe some quad A guys, maybe some guys in triple A, uh, some relievers too. Getting value out of those guys who maybe are towards the end of their service time and we don't really need, like somebody like Sanchez here who has next year and then one more year after that. Ended up rebounding a little bit here this season, but I mean, you know, wasn't what he was in 2025 with us. He's been, uh, yeah, 2023 was very good, 2024 was not, but then 2025 was really good, and then 2026 was okay. He's somebody who we could try to get some value out of here this off season, And like I keep saying, I mean, I can build the bullpen very easily, but it also it's not like Sanchez is very expensive. So, I mean, maybe we bring him back. Maybe we try to get value for him. We do have DL Hall, who we're probably going to bring, we're definitely going to be bringing back, especially if he only wants that much. So DL Hall is going to be returning this season. Uh, but basically getting value out of relievers, because we have, we can very easily build a solid bullpen here. Uh, but the thing is, we want to make sure that we have arms that can flourish in the style of bullpen that we're trying to build here, where we have, uh, let's set this back to five-man, where we have five starters who are all being limited anywhere from like 90 to 95 pitches, and then we're going to have two lefty or two long guys here 
with a couple other guys who can work multiple innings as well as a stopper and just have, you know, multiple inning guys all throughout the bullpen or just guys who have just crazy stuff like Weissenberg does with the elite slider or even somebody like Steven Cruz, who I am possibly thinking about having in the starting rotation this season. If we edit his position to starting pitcher, his potential rating drops down to 45, but this doesn't. So, I mean, 30 stamina is very, very iffy to put in the starting rotation. But, I mean, I feel like if we limit him to, like, 80, 85 pitches and we make that his pitch count, I feel like we could get some value out of Steven Cruz here and we could have this arm in the rotation and that would make him even more valuable. I'm tempted to do that this season. We'll leave him as a reliever for now, but I'm very, very tempted to put him in the rotation and just see how it goes, especially paired with, like I said, the bullpen that we're trying to build here where we have multiple guys like Bryce Elder and Sanchez and Groom and Urquidy and even Holderman. He, not even not Holderman, he's not a great stamina guy, but uh, D.L. Hall. Uh, Holderman's a guy I also might try to get some value on this season. He's 31. Uh, if we take a look at our salary page here, he uh, has a decent amount of team control. But the thing is, uh, he's just kind of taken a while to figure things out. If we take a look at his career pitching stats here, it was with the Mets was like okay in a very limited role. Or I guess he was good in a very limited role. But uh, then went to Boston, and they really amped up his role, and he was really good. And then he came to us, and he was solid too. So maybe we bring him back for like one more season because he is uh, not even an arbitration yet, is he? Yeah, he's not even an arbitration yet, so we could easily just bring him back at the minimum. I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah, we're just going to bring him back at the minimum. But once he hits arbitration, he's the guy that I would be looking to trade. But, like, as far as guys we have in our staff right now that I'd be looking to trade, uh, Lopez is a guy who we're probably... I'm, I'm leaning that we're going to not take his option and open up that money to spend elsewhere. Uh, but So that's a guy we're probably going to be losing this season. But then trading Groom is something I'm probably going to be trying to do. Trading Sanchez as well. Uh, Urquidy is a free agent, so he's going to be leaving the team as well. Mackenzie Gore is somebody that we are going to get rid of, even if we just have to, like, just waive him. But, I mean, I could probably trade him for something because he did finish the year in uh, AAA, but he, he wasn't bad for us in the big league. So we could probably get something for him, even if it's just, like, a guy with a little bit more team control who's – or even similar team control but just cheaper than he is because we're not trying to pay him $4 million for the type of player that he is. Biggio is obviously not going to get brought back because he just tore his PCL. Uh, Abanez – is a guy who we might bring back or might uh, try to trade. Because he has multiple years of team control, but he is 33. Uh, and he's, you know, kind of just a platoon guy. He is, he, that's what he is. He's just a platoon guy for us at the moment. Undecided on him, but he's definitely a guy we might look to trade here with only two more years of team control. I already said Sanchez. Deal Hall will probably bring back. Yona Doan is a guy who could come up and pitch in our bullpen this season he was very good as a starter in triple a he could even come up and possibly be one of the limited uh pitch count starters for us in the big leagues and uh, he is also not very expensive either gavin sheets is somebody who we have multiple years of team control on three more years but he is 30 we're definitely going to bring him back for next season but once after next season we might try to trade him Cade Cavalli is another guy we could come up and be an extreme ground ball arm in our bullpen. I would never start him with what his pitches are at this point in his career, but I mean, he could absolutely come up and be an extreme ground ball guy in our bullpen because, like I keep saying, I love the ground ball guys. He fits that role. Might as well get try to might as well try to get some value out of him. Weissenberger is still cheap, still has plenty of team control, so we're not trying to trade him quite yet. Uh, Corbin Carroll is an interesting player. He has three years left of team control here. Let's just see what he would want for an extension. Uh, he would want just one year. Could we possibly try to bring him back for multiple? We're going we're gonna to jump back in with Corbin Carroll a little bit later. Because obviously we extended Alec Thomas long term through 2031. And this is a very reasonable deal for what we thought he was going to be. But, I mean, obviously was very bad this season and was basically around league average last year as a bat. 
we we signed him to that long term deal thinking that he would be putting up more numbers like these, you know, these types of hitting seasons. That's what we thought we were going to be getting, but he has not done that the past two years. Still is only 26, though. He'll be like 27 once the season starts. So uh, not really too, too concerned about him. But also kind of a little bit concerning. I also said Jay Groom is one of the arms we're going to possibly try to trade this offseason. Just get some value out of him, get something. Kenny Hernandez is a possible option to come up and pitch for us, although my scat's starting to lose faith in him. He was not good at all in the nine starts he got in the big leagues this season. Uh, he had a decent FIP in 2025 when he got starts, but not so much a uh, war, or not so much an ERA+. Plus. But he was also extremely good in AAA, so we might, you know, we're probably going to keep him around for another season, but uh, starting to lose faith in him, to be honest. Jordan Lawler is an interesting player because he's still quite young. He expects to be playing in the major leagues. He tore things up in AAA for us this season, but as we know, he was not good in the big leagues, and he just kind of doesn't really have a role other than just backup infielder for us. I mean, if we get rid of Abanez, Lawler could take over that role as the second baseman platoon guy while Tamar plays only against righties, or maybe we try to play Tamar against both sides of this season, and then Lawler just ends up being the backup infielder. Because right now, if we take a look at our position players here, you know, Tamar's second base, that's easy. We're going to keep playing him there. We're not going to bench Tamar. De Los Santos... Uh, really, the, the the corner infield situation is very... Corner infield and DH situation is, is up in the air right now because obviously Gavin Sheets was very, very good as our uh, first baseman when he came over. He was very good with Chicago as well. So we are going to be giving him another season because he only wants like $4 million. We can easily just give him that. And then, you know, if he doesn't repeat what he did this year, then we probably try to trade him in the offseason next year. But uh, obviously, we'd be stupid and not give him another run at first base. So he's going to come back, play first base. But De Los Santos here, you know, he was around league average as a bat, hit 22 home runs, but really fell off in the second half of the season, as we can see here in the splits for just major league here. June, August, September was not great for him, but he was really good early on in the season. Uh, also, not really a third baseman. Take a look at his feeling stats here. It wasn't like he was good at first, but he also wasn't good at third. I guess he was actually a little bit better at third than he was at first. Not really sure how that is, but still, you know, not a good defender anywhere, really. But uh, also, you know, you would think he would be a guy who would be a decent bat to actually bring back here. It's just, do we really want De Los Santos playing every day for third base for us? Mendez is obviously our shortstop. We're not changing that. Carroll is in left field. Thomas is ideally in right, and then Mullins comes back and is obviously in center field. Uh, Connor Scott could move to DH possibly because he was very good. I did like how he played for us. Uh, but the thing is, Cruz is still here. You know, we're not trying to give up on Josue Cruz here. Ideally, he plays again. You know, he, he had 28 home runs, 24 doubles. Uh, obviously, he did fall off a cliff at the end of the season, but, I mean, he was still very good in April, June, and July. I mean, very, very good. So, I mean, you know, just clean up this, and he puts together a really good season. I mean, he had like a 120-ish WRC plus before August and September happened, and then he uh, finished the season with what he did because he just slumped at the end of the year. And it's, I'm not like I'm trying – it's not like I'm trying to take him out of the lineup. So basically, what are we? What room do we really have to maneuver here with the lineup is what I'm saying. So what I'm thinking here with the lineups is that it's going to look like something like this. Uh, the surefire guys who are back at positions are Marshawn and Perry are the catcher tandem. That's definitely coming back for next season. Gavin Sheets will be at first base. Tamar Johnson will be at second. Agent Zero is at shortstop. Corbin Carroll's in left, Alec Thomas is in right, Josue Cruz will be the DH, and uh, Cedric Mullins, who's on the IL right now, and I don't want to bring him back until we actually have to, will be the center fielder, obviously. While Connor Scott is a guy who we would ideally have as like a backup corner outfielder, De Los Santos could be the backup first baseman and third baseman. We also have Rock Reggio, who we would ideally like to bring back. He was very good. He's got positional versatility. So is Riggio kind of the odd man out here when it comes to the bench? I mean, if we started Santos at third, we could have Riggio slot into these spots. 
you know, we could have Riggio slot into first, third, also playing some corner outfield possibly, maybe back up second. But I was thinking that we would bring on, like, Lawler up from AAA, for example. So we'll just call him up here. Why not? Boom. Uh, Lawler could be the backup second and shortstop. So we could have one, two, three, four bench players, but then fifth would have to be, we would have to have five bench players as a backup center fielder because obviously Connor Scott's not a center fielder. But if we don't have Lawler, we don't really have anybody who can be a backup shortstop for us. Christian Napsik, who we picked up in the Boston trade, I believe he came over with Rock Reggio. Uh, he did indeed. He was with the Zach Gallon trade where we got Reggio, Kasovich, Dolander, Miro, and Napchik. Uh, and Miro is another interesting player. So Napchik here, very good avoid K, good discipline, decent gap power, average contact. Can play some second, some short, maybe some third if we give him some time there. He's a leader, very good base runner, good bench player to have. Another lefty bat though, so that's, you know, overload on lefties here. Wasn't too great for us. But, I mean, still going to be a guy who we bring up around next season as well, even if he's just depth. We still have McLean in AAA, although he wasn't good in AAA. We might try to just trade him or cut bait on him. Because one thing I do want to do with our minor leagues this season is we always have so many guys in AAA. I really did a decent job at cutting down this season. Like, we only had, like, 20-so pitchers in AAA and... Uh, like 20, a little bit, like, like a little over 20 uh, hitters in AAA as well, which definitely is a bit high, but also it's the minor leagues. So you want more than, you know, like 10, you want more than like 12, 13 guys on your bench in the, uh, in the minors, but also, you know, 20 is definitely a bit high. So ideally we do want to cut down on some of the, uh, the extra fluff we have at the AAA level. And we don't want to overload those teams to where we have guys. So we would like to get playing time who just kind of can't because we're just kind of loaded up with guys like Napsik, for example, who are like second baseman left field type of players. We have a lot of guys like that who really like their ideal position is like second left field first. Manuel Pena is an interesting option to possibly be a corner infield bat for us, though. First base, third baseman type, but another lefty bat. So uh, we just have so many lefties that, uh, you know, just bringing this guy to the big leagues wouldn't really help out because we just, like I said, have so, so many lefty bats. But the real interesting player that we have is Antonio Anderson, who obviously my scat thinks is a 70 potential. He was our 15th overall pick in 2023. He would help out with getting those actual drafted players to the major leagues here where we have Tamar at second and maybe Antonio Anderson ends up being our third baseman this season. He's been in double A for a significant period of time. Definitely better last year than he was in the previous year, but he really hasn't had a breakout season here for us in the minor leagues. Never has put up a WRC plus above 100. Never has really put up a WRC plus that's been really respectable at all. I mean, I guess respectable, you could say, in, in, in when he was in Class A and when he was in Double A this year. But uh, he is still 21. He'll be like 22 by the time the season starts. Definitely had a huge power surge this year. 13 is the biggest he's had in the major league, or in the in, as he's been a professional, I should say. 28 doubles, too. That's a big jump for him. But... Uh, you know, my scat's still very high on him. OSA is a little bit lower, but still. Uh, he, could, he could be an interesting player for us to play third base, possibly. I don't know if I want to start him in AAA or not, but uh, definitely a guy who could play third base for us at some point, even if we end up signing like a stopgap third baseman in free agency. Like I was saying, we would ideally like to have an outfielder here who could back up Mullins so we could possibly, you know, avoid Mullins getting hurt because he was overworked. We didn't really have a backup center fielder last year. Uh, I feel like that probably played into Mullins getting hurt. So I would ideally like to have a guy who can play center field so he's not having to play constantly because our backup option is like Tim Tawa in center field. But I am going to go ahead and we are not going to bring back Pablo Lopez. We are going to void his last year as contract. So Pablo Lopez is a free agent. You know, maybe he ends up going to free agency wanting a little bit less than the $14 million that he was going to get this year. We can bring him back even. But uh, wasn't really interested in playing him, paying him $14 million. We get a little bit extra cash here that we're going to be able to spend. And then we're also going to be opening up some other uh, opportunities here like Kevin Biggio's $2 million is going to come off the books. 
uh, or Quiddy's $1 million is going to come off the books. We're possibly going to tr try to trade uh, Sanchez here. So that's like about $2 million coming off the books. Same with Abanez if we trade him. And then also Mackenzie Gore, who is slotted to get like $4 million in arbitration this year. We will be trying to uh, trade him as well to get some value for him. So our third base coach job is open, and I believe we are going to go with Rob Makowiak here. Makowiak, however you pronounce his name. I'm pretty sure he's a former player. He is indeed. Yes, I do remember him on the Pirates. I knew I wasn't I wasn't misremembering. I remember that name. Uh, we are going to be getting him as our third base coach here. He has uh, excellent teach running, which is better than anybody we have currently on our staff. And he's got excellent in-game running, which is the best uh, in-game running and teach running available ratings out there at the moment. So we are just going to be giving him a contract here to be our third base coach. Thank you very much. That, uh, yeah, three years seems fine to me. We'll bump it up to, like, I don't know, 120 here just to make it a little bit more enticing. And boom, he should accept that. All righty, so here's the deal we're going to be doing for Jay Groom here. Jay Groom, you know, ground ball pitcher, lefty, 28. He's got, like, two more years of team control. Uh, reliever, you know, he's a reliever. We're going to get some value for him here open up a spot in our bullpen, and we're going to pick up a right-handed bat who could possibly be a decent first base, second base, third base type of guy, maybe some left field too. You know, positional versatility, adds a right-handed bat to our organization here who could play on our bench. He expects to be a starter, but he's not going to be a starter. He's going to be on our bench. Maybe a platoon against left-handed pitching, but uh, we add him to our organization here. He is coming into arbitration, but he's only slotted to make $1.4 million, so very cheap to pick up here, even cheaper than Groom is making. And we are going to pick up this 28-year-old Japanese starter who had a very good season in AAA with the St. Saint Paul Saints. And uh, this guy is interesting. My scout seems to think that he's got five above-average pitches, two above-average, three pitches with a 65 grade, above-average above stuff, Above average movement, a little bit less than, they can, uh, less than ideal control, but I mean, this many good pitches above average, I mean, seems like a guy who could be a sneaky good starter for us. So we are going to acquire him, 28-year-old Naofumi Kazawa. He is a uh, real player. He was in the MVP and uh, came over from, uh, in 2025, signed with the Twins, didn't ever make it. They got released at the end of 2025, signed with the Mariners, uh, then got released by the Mariners, and then signed with the Twins again, and now we are going to be giving him a shot. He's the guy who I'm probably going to be putting in our big league rotation, ideally, honestly. Uh, definitely a guy I'm thinking about putting in our big league rotation here, I should say, for 2027. So these are the two players we're picking up for Jay Groom. Boom. So here is an offer for Corbin Carroll that he would be interested in. We get him for this upcoming season at $4.8 million. That's fair value. That's basically what he's offering. What he's going to get in arbitration. Same with this year. Same with this year. I think this is actually a little bit cheaper, honestly. Uh, we docked this down a bit. The original offer was much more expensive than this. Uh, but we get him through age 31 with a team option in that age 31 season. He's already got three years of service time, so this buys out like the three more years or so. I think he has three years left of team control here, and then I believe it's three years of free agency that we would also buy out with this. If I'm, if I'm, if my math is correct here, but I mean this is definitely below uh, value of what you would get for a guy like this going into free agency. He's 26. He's coming off a season where he was basically our best hitter, if not our best hitter. And uh, I'm thinking we're going to pull the trigger on this. Get Corbin Carroll here locked up long-term with the uh, possible team option opt-out for 2032 at age 31. We're going to do it. Submit the offer for Corbin Carroll. Boom. That's what we get. Uh, that's what we're offering him. So we're here looking at the arbitration screen, and I noticed that Pablo Lopez is now eligible for uh, the qualifying offer because he is going to be heading into free agency here. And he wants, you know, about $15 million here for the, uh, for the extension. So I figured, why not try to give him the QO here? If he accepts that, then, you know, we get him back on a little bit more than we would have gotten him uh, for, you know, if we just got him on his team option. But 
we also have the possibility of getting a draft pick for him. So we are just going to, uh, we're going to do that. We're going to submit, uh, sub submit the QO on Pablo Lopez if he accepts it, then find we get him another for another season, a little bit more expensive than we were going to get him. But if he declines it, we get a draft pick. All right, so here's another trade we are going to be doing, uh, giving Miami a few guys here. Uh, this John Del John Del Sanchez guy is just somebody added onto the deal. He's just a nobody who's been in rookie ball who we just haven't gotten rid of. He's just a make it work guy on the deal. But Warner Blakely from AAA doesn't really have a role on our team. Uh, Luis Tejada reliever could be decent. You know, not really too much upside to him. And then Reed Trimble, who just tore his labrum and uh, was decent and it was pretty good in AAA this year. But, uh, you know, obviously we have plenty of corner outfield talent here in the big leagues uh, and just at the AAA, you know, quad A level. So we don't need Reed Trimble. And we are going to be getting Max Meyer in return, who hasn't really panned out to be what, uh, you know, they would have hoped, but he's a ground ball pitcher. We know very much that I'm trying to get ground ball pitchers. He's only 27. He'll be like 28 when the season starts. He's entering his first year of arbitration at like 1.3 million, so very cheap to pick up here. And he's coming off a two-war season with 31 starts. So very solid numbers here. He could absolutely flourish in our system, either as a reliever or a limited pitch count starter like we are going to be running with here. So... Max Meyer, he's going to come over to our team and hopefully be a solid pitcher for us. And boom, we're pulling the trigger on it. And it increases the fan interest. What do you know? And we are continuing our wheeling and dealing here as we are going to be trading Mackenzie Gore to the Houston Astros along with Daniel Lloyd, who is just a triple-A reliever. You know, he could be a decent guy for us, but, uh, you know, wasn't too, too great in triple-A the past two seasons. So I figured why not get some value out of a guy he's, you know, unprotected in the Rule 5 draft this year. So why not trade him along with Gore, who we get out of his contract or arbitration, rather. Uh, and also just, you know, wasn't very good for us. He was, like, okay for a little bit. But, you know, overall not, not too great for us this season. And uh, we also get rid of this guy who's just, you know, some maybe prospect we signed as a minor league free agent at some point. He's been in, he's been in rookie ball, you know. He's just nobody, really. So we get these three guys to Houston, and we get Brian Abreu and his nasty, nasty stuff. Obviously, some control issues. Three, uh, if we take a look at his stats here for the major leagues, lots of uh, lots of high walk per nine, but also strike out a lot per nine. And uh, he's actually been a starter and a reliever. We take a look at his splits here. Major league, not so much as a starter, but good as a reliever. You know, maybe he ends up being a guy with limit innings in the rotation. Maybe he ends up being a stopper, long relief sort of guy in the bullpen. But he is absolutely somebody we are interested in having in our rotation, this, or in our staff this season. So Brian Abreu, you know, not league minimum, not $1 million, but he's only making like $2.4 million this upcoming season. So, you know, not a, not a huge deal here. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to acquire him. As we tab back to also acquiring Taylor Walls, the man from the Red Series. Uh, you know, I don't really expect him to be uh, a huge contributor here, but he's, you know, high leader, work ethic guy. Play some decent defense at the middle infield, good base runner. You know, at the very least, he's a good bench piece to have. And he's been putting up some decent numbers in uh, the past few seasons. Durham had a two-war season there above league average bat. They didn't bring him back. Goes to Indie Bowl, has a good season. The Houston Astros bring him in, puts up a two war with uh, the Sugarland Skeeters or the Sugarland, uh, they're the Space Cowboys now. They used to be the Skeeters. And, uh, you know, switch hitter. Might as well bring him on here. So we get Brian Abreu, Taylor Walls. They get these three guys. Boom. And uh, decreases noticeably. But uh, it doesn't go back up for a break. But, I mean, still, it's fine. Mackenzie Gore, you know, I guess he's popular. But, uh, well, oh, well. So, while trying to trade Andy Banias here, I also added uh, Jesus here, number 97 pitching prospect uh, down at Rookie Ball. My scan thinks he might be something. But, I mean, he is so incredibly far away from ever actually doing anything. Low work ethic guy, too. So, I'd be fine with trading him, cashing in on his prospect ranking value. And uh, 
a couple interesting pieces pop up here. So Nolan Gorman is one. You know, my scout thinks he has a little bit of below, a little bit above average power bat, league average, rest of the way. Could absolutely play third base for us. You know, listed as a first baseman, but he could play third base. Thing is, he hasn't really. He had a couple of good seasons here in the big leagues. A really good uh, 164 in 2024, but hasn't really gotten. I guess he has gotten a shot. He just what he's coming off a bad year. 19 home runs, 18 doubles, but I mean, still below league average. Uh, take a look at his ZR here. Uh, you know, not a good defender, but uh, we're not getting him for his defense here. We're getting him for his potential bat. He'd be a lefty bat adding to the lineup. Kind of interested in him. Maybe maybe not for this exact package, but he's he's an option on the table to play third base for us. But the other option that I'm seeing here is Luis Garcia here, who has been playing third base. And he has another lefty bat, but I mean, he has been phenomenal for the Nationals. And I would be very interested in acquiring him. He has been consistently good. Two war his first uh, basically full season in the big leagues here. A little bit below average uh, bat. But then ever since then, he's just exploded. He's been an above league average bat. 4.7, 3.0, 3.5 war. Led the... Uh, American League or led the National League in hits last season, has hit 30 home runs, 20 years, 20 home runs the year before, 46 doubles one of these years, 39 doubles last year. Very, very good hitter, only 26 years old, and he is signed to an extremely team friendly contract, not even 30 yet at the end of this deal. And the last two years of it are 14.9, 11.6, 7.7 for the up for uh. Or this upcoming season as, as 11. So we would be getting him for these three years. And I mean, he would absolutely help with the bat. So I'm very interested in Luis Garcia here. I'm thinking that's what we're leaning with the deal that we're trying to make here. So Luis Garcia, maybe not doing exactly this. But uh, let's see what we could give them. I'm thinking we're going to pull the trigger on this right here. So obviously our money would drop to uh, 17 million, but I mean, we are picking up an extremely, extremely good bat here in Luis Garcia to add to our lineup. And I'm very confident we're going to be able to pitch again this season. And uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I feel like this is just an all around win. So we get Luis Garcia. We're also going to add on Aaron Ashby here. Under 30, lefty arm, great stuff. Two really good pitches, extreme ground ball guy. Hasn't been too, too great at all, really, in the major leagues. Uh, aside from 2022, he had a decent season. Has struggled majorly since then, especially in the bullpen here with Washington. But, uh, you know, we get him cheap. He doesn't really want... Yeah, he's, he's only going to get like $1.6 million in arbitration this year. If he doesn't work out, we can just wave him, DFA him. Doesn't really matter. But uh, he is a guy who could possibly be a really solid pickup here as a lefty in the bullpen. And, you know, lefties are always valuable to have. And uh, we get these two guys. Well, they get Andy Abanez to go to their squad. And they also get this top prospect guy. Maybe he's something, maybe he's not. And they also get Jagger Haynes. It's just like an add-on to make the deal work. He's a lefty we picked up from San Diego uh, last offseason. Nothing really too special. He was not great in double A this past year. So these three guys go into the Nationals. And we pick up Luis Garcia on his team-friendly deal. Or uh, we get these three years, 11 mil, 14.9 and 14.9, age 27, 28, and 29 to play third base for us. And uh, yeah, so this is what we're doing here, pulling the trigger. So before we make any more moves, before we dip into free agency, before we do any more trades, before we do anything else, our team's looking pretty solid here, if I do say so myself. We got a rotation that could possibly be Sandoval, Slade, Marejo, Morajone, Still can't pronounce his name cleanly. Max Meyer and Brian Abreu here as five potential starters. And then in the bullpen, we would have D.L. Hall, Colin Holderman, Steven Cruz, Weissenberger, Barrett Lasky, Aaron Ashby, and Bryce Elder back in the bullpen. We're still trying to trade Sanchez here. Even if he does come back, he's still, you know, he's a cheap arm. But I would ideally like to get something that we can use for him. Or maybe he's just a depth guy. Who knows? But Urquidy and Lopez are definitely guys who will not be back. Unless unless Lopez accepts his qualifying offer. He accepts his qualifying offer. All of a sudden, he ends up in the 
in the rotation and one of these guys moves into the bullpen, but I, I highly doubt he accepts it. He wants a multi-year thing. He's not going to accept a one million a one-year deal. But when it comes to the hitting side of things, our lineup one to nine or not one to nine. This is ignore what this is. Just look at what the depth chart is. Could be some sort some version of this. Marshawn catching. Perry, maybe Perry breaks out, he takes over as the starting catcher, but for, at least for now, Marshawn's the number one catcher, Perry's the backup, Sheets at first, Tamar's at second, Luis, Luis Garcia is at third, Agent Zero's at short, Carroll's in left, Thomas is in right, Cruz is at DH, and the uh, center fielder will, of course, be Cedric Mullins, while... Scott, Lawler, and De Los Santos are the combination of the backups. This still leaves it to where we don't really have a backup center fielder, but we can figure things out with that as we go on. Maybe we have a, one less reliever. Maybe we, you know, have somebody, uh, maybe De Los Santos goes down and we end up having somebody else play first. Like maybe Scott will play like the backup first baseman. I don't know. We can do plenty of things and uh, try to figure in a center fielder. The, the bench is the least of our worries here. We'll, I feel like we have a solid lineup constructed heading into the season, and I feel like we have a solid pitching staff already constructed. And this is before we head into the free agency. Remember, we do have about $17 million, uh, in the budget right now, $18 million, but this is without anything put into here. So this is just the total money that we have for the free agency, re-signs, and, and, you know, draft and international amateurs. And uh, we did also offer Corbin Carroll that extension, so it's going to, you know, chunk into this a little bit. But uh, we are going to have some guys come off the uh, the contracts. Like, this is beef. Is it before Lopez? I'm not sure how they factor it in, but it might be before Lopez's contract gets factored in or get, gets off the books. Uh, but once again, he, he can't accept the qualifying offer. We're going to get Biggio's contract off the books here. Sanchez, like I said, we're possibly trying to trade him. And right now it's looking like Adon and Cavalli are guys that we probably aren't going to bring back. Both of them are up for arbitration, and both of them just default are not getting offers because they were in AAA. Adon is... Uh, had a really good season in AAA, though, so I'm kind of tempted to bring him back on like a cheap deal or like on arbitration for cheap and Cavalli did not really have a good season in AAA though uh even though he is an extreme ground baller I'm kind of leaning to where if we do bring back one of these guys it's probably going to be a Doan and Cavalli will be the odd man out who probably just goes down into uh free agency we have this fella, Edgardo Henriquez, who we picked up in a Dodgers trade in 2025 at the deadline. He has two really good pitches, uh, one changeup that's 60-65. Not the best control, but he's a decent player. He was pretty solid in AA this past year. Came up the AAA, wasn't as good, but still a guy who's around in the system. Obviously, we still have Rincon in the system. He still has four really solid pitches. Remember, we just picked up this Kazawa guy from the Twins and the Jose Miranda deal. He is absolutely somebody who I would look to get into the big leagues at some point this season, if not on the opening day roster. We still have Luke Murphy in the system as well. He could be a guy that we either don't bring back, but he's, he even wants less than a million on arbitration. So, I mean, is there really any harm in bringing him back? We got this fella, Andrew Schultz, we picked up from the Yankees in 2023, and he's just kind of been barely pitching in our system in AAA. Our scout seems to think he has some nasty, nasty stuff. So once we do, like, the great purge of our AAA team, this guy is going to be somebody who probably pitches a decent amount in AAA and could end up being in the big leagues here with some nasty stuff. This is another guy who's a low-control, nasty stuff sort of pitcher that I like. Lefty, 80-grade movement, good sinker-slider combo. Hasn't pitched much. But uh, like I said, once we do the purge, he should be a guy who pitches more and... Uh, Definitely a guy I'd like, at least with what his ratings show. An extreme ground ball. We all know a big fan. 80 movement. I'm, I'm liking that combo. And then we've also got still Blake Walston in the system. He's, you know, lefty. It's always good to have lefties around. He was pretty good in AAA last season. Even down in AA, Capochi's probably going to end up in AAA this season, even though he wasn't that great. And he was, he was pretty bad, actually, in AA. So maybe he repeats AA and ends up in AAA later on in the season, but he's still around in the system. Brady Fuller is a guy who's still here in the system. Hasn't been good in AA, but I mean, my scat thinks he's got good ratings. Uh, maybe he breaks out this season. Maybe we put him in AAA. He's probably bored. Uh, maybe not. Maybe he's not bored with AA, uh, but... 
Maybe he breaks out this year. Don't like the extreme fly ball, but he is definitely an option to have in the system. And then, of course, there's Trenton Shaw, who was our second-round pick in 2025. Was great, just going straight to high A in his rookie season. Was in uh, double A last year. Not so great, but still, you know, decent enough. A little bit below league average. And uh, he'll be 23 when the season starts. He's also an option to have up in the big leagues at some point this season if he performs well. We also still have Joe Elvis in the system, but he's extreme fly ball. And he might be somebody I try to trade for like another area of need because we have plenty of depth pitching. So Elvis is a guy who still probably has a little bit of trade value here that we could try to dip into. But I mean, the point is we have plenty of pitching depth here. So I'm thinking our team's in a pretty solid spot here. Also, just a very, very minor quality of life thing. You'll notice that the bars here are now turquoise instead of purple because I got tired of looking at the division graph here and having us uh, and the Rockies both as purple. So now it's very clear that we are the turquoise team on the division graph. Also, just a little stat update here. We've added a couple new stats to our overlay here. We now have win probability added to... Uh, the overlay as well as a ground at percentage and pitch per game. While on the hitting side of things, we've added a couple as well. WOBA, win probability added. We've also added ISO to the number next to home run. And we've added, uh, we took out caught stealing percent or just the amount of caught stealing and just have just stolen base percentage next to it. And then also uh, BSR to help us, you know, identify really good uh, stolen base guys like Tamar Johnson. You can see here actually was, uh, if we take a look at our lineups here, he actually added the most win probability to our team last year, despite being an 80 WRC plus on our team, you know, 92 ISO, 0 92 ISO. But I mean, his, his stolen base numbers were really good. Stole 39 bags. Uh, where'd it go? I already lost. Here we go. 39 bags, 81% stolen base rate, and then a 10.1 BSR. So, you know, just really, really effective on the base paths. All righty. So we do end up getting Corbin Carroll extended. He has signed his deal. So we have him through 2032 now. Take a look at his contract. Uh, this upcoming season will be at 4.8, then it bumps up to 7, then it's at 8.5, and then we get two years of guaranteed at 11 million, and then a team option for his age 31 season at 15.5 million, and that year has a $1.6 million buyout on it. So very, very team-friendly deal here for Corbin Carroll, who is a very solid player for us last season and has been here uh, for three seasons now. Above average hitter. You know, three war, two war last, uh, 2025. Never a power hitter, but hits a ton of doubles. Gets on base a lot. Top of the order guy for us. Steals a lot of bags. Definitely a guy we want to keep around, obviously. And then as of right now, we still do have a little bit of, uh, you know, spending money to do. And this will open up a bit more once we head into actual, you know, like everybody's deal comes off our books and we end up heading into the free agency period. All right, so we're offering Marshawn here an extension. Uh, he wants like a little bit, I think it's like 2.1 or something in arbitration. So we're giving him 1.9 here for this coming season. And then we're giving him a team option to increase it to 3.5 for the next season because it would go up like that anyways for arbitration. And, uh, you know, if he stinks this season, we can just buy him out. We don't have to give him that and we'll probably just, you know, not bring him back. But... Uh, this is what we're giving him, so Marshawn getting the extension or offered the extension. And if you take a look here at the guys eligible for arbitration, we are going to be non-tendering both Cavalli and Christopher Sanchez. Uh, I thought about Adon as a guy that we might not uh, bring back, but we're going to try to offer him a little bit less than he got last year at 1.2. You know, obviously he hasn't been good in the big leagues for us when he has pitched. If we take a look at his splits here, 2024 came over from Washington, had a decent FIP, not great ERA plus. 2025 had 24 starts, 14 relief appearances, wasn't really good at all in either role. But uh, last year in AAA, he was really good in AAA. So I feel like He's got three more years of team control. Might as well just, you know, roll the dice on him and see if we can get him back in our team here. And, you know, if he stinks, we get rid of him. If he doesn't, that's good. But uh, Cavalli is a guy who, you know, he's just, my guys don't think too highly of him anymore. 
wasn't good in AAA this past season, wasn't ever good in the bigs for us. Just really unfortunate that he came over and got hurt literally one start into uh, acquiring him. And then Sanchez is, you know, he was our stopper in uh, 2025, made the all-star team. Really good for us that season. Really good for us in 2023. You know, if this flip-flopping of, like, good, bad, good, bad, maybe he's good this season. But, I mean, he's about to be 30. He's got this year and then, like, one more year. I tried trading him. Nobody wants him. We're trying to open up spots on our team anyways. So Christopher Sanchez, you know, not very valuable. We're just going to be letting him walk. Also, Kenny Hernandez. We're we're not going to be bringing back Kenny Hernandez. I already waived and DFA'd him to get him off the 40 man and get his money off the uh, the payroll and and the uh, projected uh, whatever whatever he was on like a projected guaranteed major league contract. So we just you know we we don't need him. Obviously, he was very very good in AAA every single season that he was with us. I mean, just especially in the last two years, very solid. Keeps getting better in AAA, but uh, you know. 18 total starts in the big leagues, 68 ERA plus. Not really confident that he's going to be able to turn things around. You know, maybe he ends up turning things around somewhere else, but not going to be with us. Would you look at that? Manager of the year, baby. Robert Earl Kane gets manager of the year. The 2026 skipper of the year for the D-backs with his 82 and 80 record. Oh, wow. So I thought Hernandez was going to be, you know, a guy who just ends up in a free agency. But uh, the Nationals actually claimed him. Very, very strange. So he's going to, he might be going to the Nationals. He does indeed. He does indeed go to the Nationals. Apparently the fan interest increases or decreases slightly because I don't know why that would happen. He's, you know, never been any good. But he goes to Washington. Maybe he'll figure things out there. Who knows? But if we take a look, the National League MVP this season was Fernando Tatis Jr., Correa finished second, Bogarts. Wow, Correa and Bogarts are on the Cubs? That is disgusting. And then in the American League, it is Corey Seager of the Texas Rangers. Perdomo, who I'm assuming won the Cy Young, was second place behind him. Uh, looks like the Mariners have both Julio and uh, Noel V. Marte up in the big leagues just doing their damn thing. And, uh, yeah, NL Cy Young, Ian Anderson, the Northeast baseball man, upstate New York. Uh, wow, look at that. Max Freed now on the Cubs. He's also in second place. This Chapman guy, the Pirates, I really like him. Really high control, good stuff. Two really solid pitches. He's been really good with the Pirates. They have another guy who I really like too. Uh, Pirates, actually, really good in this universe. And then, like I said, the, the AL Cy Young winner is Cesar Perdomo of the White Sox. Tanner Houck, wow. In second place, Luis Castillo also on the Red Sox in second place, even though he uh, tore his labor towards the end of the season, I guess. Cannon Pickle. Pickel. Cannon Pickel. I've, I've never heard of this guy, but I'm assuming he's a real player. But, uh, insane. Insane stuff from this guy. 280 grade pitches, 80 grade stuff, 75 grade fastball, good control, good movement. I mean, Jesus, they got this guy just absolutely tearing things up for him. Finishes behind. There are some really, really good pitchers throughout the league. And meanwhile, we're just kind of like trying to like, you know, piece together like a serviceable rotation over here in uh, Arizona. I was also curious if Mendez possibly got gold glove, but he did not. Uh, he didn't play the full season. And of course, there's Tovar, who, like I said, is basically what we can hope Mendez turns into for us. Mendez already much younger than Tovar. So who knows? Maybe by the time Mendez is 25, this is what we can expect to see from him. Obviously, never going to be a hitter, but, uh, you know, a guy who swipes a decent amount of bags, maybe. Definitely, he, he's more of a, definitely more of a stolen base threat than Mendez is if we take a look. Uh, well, maybe not. I didn't realize Mendes was that good of a base runner. So, you know, maybe, basically, yeah, basically that's what we can look forward to with Mendes is being Alfredo Tovar. And then just because I can, we decided to actually add his nickname, Agent Zero. That's what he is. Agent Zero. Albert Mendes. Alberto Mendes is, uh, he's our shortstop, baby. All right, so we do indeed get the extension for Marshawn. He gets that uh, two-year deal, second year being an option. We also got Gavin Sheets for a little bit less than he was going to get in arbitration. Same deal with Deal Hall and same deal with Max Meyer. Oh, wow. So that's uh, not what we like to see. 
uh, Pablo Lopez does indeed accept the qualifying offer. So we are going to be paying him uh, much more than we were going to originally because I, I figured that he would have wanted a multi-year deal, but I guess he's fine taking the QO. So we get Pablo Lopez at 18.9 million. That means, okay, so we still have like 19 million to spend in free agency here. All right, so we actually do have a little bit less money than I thought I was going to. So only 3 million for free agency. We definitely need to find a way to open up a bit more of this this season. But next year it does actually jump to uh, 41. So uh, that's generally how I look at this is this is this year. This is next year. It's a little bit more complicated than that. But I mean, that's generally how I look at this. And like I keep saying, we... Uh, have zero in draft budget and international amateur. So this money for free agents number is what we have to spend for the draft, the international amateurs, and free agency. So definitely not ideal there because we would obviously like to uh, like to be able to, you know, actually uh, take somebody in the draft this year and be able to pay them the, uh, the amount of money they're going to want in like the first round. So it does make sense that we're going to just have a lot more money next season because obviously Mullins comes off the uh, the books next season if we don't bring him back. Lopez also is going to come off the books. And we have Luis Garcia, who will be like our highest paid guy up at that point. But I mean, like I said, Garcia, Thomas, and then the extension we just gave, uh, where is he? Corbin Carroll. Uh, th those are very team-friendly extensions. And the thing is, I really don't know how we're going to be able to open up money I mean, this is the thing about being a, a small market team is you just don't, you just don't have money. So what we might have to do is just kind of, I guess, eat into this and just actually do put numbers in here because, you know, I would, I would like to be able to, to, to actually get that in the draft this year. All right. So if we drop our player development down to 10 million, which is not ideal, I, I generally like to have that a little bit higher than. The baseline, you know, I was having it at 16 million, but I guess, you know, it, it wouldn't be too bad if we drop it down to 10 million. So I think that's what we're going to do there for the, just this season. And then uh, I also dropped our scouting budget down to the league baseline, which is 8 million. You, you know, you can't put it up to 24 million. We've had it at about 9 million, so it's not really too big of a drop here. And dropping that down makes it so we have 10 million here available for our. Uh, just all all around our draft international. So I mean, this probably not going to be out signing anybody. I mean, we did just trade or trade for Luis Garcia. So I mean, I don't feel like we we have to make any big additions here. We, you know, we picked up Max Meyer, we picked up Ryan Abreu, we get we get Pablo Lopez back. We have Aaron Ashby in the in the bullpen now as well. Holderman's back. I feel like our 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 staff is you know all, with all the guys we've in AAA as well. Absolutely, we don't need, really need to do any proof. Could we if we had the money? Yes, but we don't. So that's not like an option. And then the bats, you know, we improved with that by picking up Luis Garcia. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to have uh, Mr. Cedric Mullins back on the team. And I don't know why it's showing OSA ratings. But uh, Mr. Cedric Mullins back on the team in center field. So, I mean, this is absolutely an improved lineup. We got a full season of Gavin Sheets. And, uh, you know, I, I don't feel like we need to go out and, and get anything like too, too crazy. So some interesting names that are jumping at are, you know, Soto's in the free agent in the free agent pool. You know, we would never be able to afford him anyways. Uh, the Stelos Santos guy is it, it, obviously insane. One of these uh, generated free agents. But, uh, you know, he's going to want an absolute ton of money. We can't afford that, even if we were... Uh, you know, having a little bit more budget than we usually do because we're the D-backs and we never have too much money to spend. Uh, Cease is really the most interesting one to me. He's going to miss, like, most of the season after seven months here with a uh, ruptured UCL. He is a pitcher who has been, uh, you know, very good pretty much every season of this sim, but he's been hurt a ton like six innings in 2024 six seven innings in 2025 seven innings last year and he's always good when he pitches i guess he's just gotten hurt a lot uh so yeah got a ucl injury in may of 2026 tore his ucl in 2025 
uh, rotator cuff strain in 2024, bone chips in his elbow in 2024. I mean, just an absolutely horrible injury history for Dylan Cease here. So at only $9.5 million, I would be interested in possibly trying to give him like a two-year deal or something uh, if he was, you know, if we had the money to do it, but I mean, that would just take out like 90% of uh, our available money here. So I'm not trying to do that. All right. So one super cheap deal that we're going to be able to go ahead and offer somebody is Alec Manoa, who is a pitcher who hasn't really had too much success here in the sim, but my scout thinks he's got three 70 grade with a 75 grade changeup. So two 70 grade, one 75 grade, decent stuff. Fly ball pitcher isn't the greatest, but I mean, could he possibly flourish as a, you know, limited to 90 pitches guy in our rotation or even maybe even just being a full-time bullpen guy? We've had success with picking up some of these guys from other teams who used to be like big name prospects and come in like D.L. Hall, for example, and just be a really good stopper for us. Manoa could be cut from that same cloth. Don't like the fly ball pitcher, but, uh, you know, three th these pitches are very, very enticing and he's, you know, only going to be able to get him on 1.1 million. Easy, easy for the, uh, you know, probably not going to do too many more signings here, even even at 1 million, because this is just basically our, our entire budget we're going to have this season. But uh, Manoa is a guy we are going to be adding to our staff this year, if he does accept this and nobody else outbids me, assuming. All right, so we are here on December 23rd. It is time for the Rule 5 draft, and we are actually in a position to add somebody this year if we like what we see with a player because we actually have one spot open on our 40-man roster here. We just added the guys who I wanted to protect. Uh, all of them were position players. They were uh, Manuel Pena, who had a very good season in AA for us last year, 125 WRC+, 16 home runs, 38 doubles. Decent power bat corner infielder guy to have on the organization. Uh, and then we also added uh, Jack Lausch because my scout thinks this guy is really, really making progress here. Thinks he's a 70 potential right fielder. Definitely intriguing. He was a 12th round pick of ours in the first season of this uh, series. And, you know, now he's up here 22, almost 23 years old and uh, being added to the 40-man roster. And I also added... Uh, one more guy. That's right. The other one was Francesco Capocci here, who is a starting pitcher who was in double A last year. Didn't have the best season, but I mean, he could be a guy who turns out to be a pretty decent starter here. I mean, Slade didn't break out until he was like 27. So, or was it 26? So Capocci here, definitely a guy who can, uh, you know, maybe, uh, be a decent player for us. He was a third round pick in 2023 out of I'm assuming that's a that's a high school, Denmark high school. Gotta be it's it's gotta be Denmark high school. So here's somebody I've had on my radar for quite a bit actually. He's on one of my short lists here, uh, minors, other organizations because I've been noticing him putting up some really solid hitting seasons through the minor leagues here with Montgomery and Durham with the Rays, coming off a three WAR 122 WRC plus in AAA for them. Right-handed bat, we could always use that on our team. Can play all over the infield. Uh, can even play some out if we play him there, but he's, you know, going to be like a backup infielder for us. I feel like we could absolutely use him to be on our team here. So we are going to draft Junior Caminero as the last spot on our 40-man roster. Caminero? Probably Caminero. I'm, I'm betting it's Caminero. Caminero. All righty, so the Rule 5 draft has come to an end. Uh, it looks like the Marlins took Frank Schwindel, Brandon Drury got taken, a couple other guys. Uh, Adrian, Del Cast Adrian Del Castillo is actually a former uh, D-backs farmhead. We had him season one. I forget when we traded him or why we traded him. Yeah, he was in the uh, package to pick up Ma Matt Strom on the deadline. We were trying to make the playoffs uh, in season one. When we traded Christian Walker, J.B. Wendelkin, and Del Castillo. And he just kind of bounced around different systems. But now he's a, a Rule 5 draft pick here of the uh, Royals. Or I guess I shouldn't say he bounced around different systems. He's been with the Red Sox ever since then. All right, so if we just take a quick little glimpse at what our lineup could potentially look like here. 
just a comically lefty heavy lineup. I'm not too concerned about it because obviously this is the lineup against righties. And I mean, all these guys pretty much except for Cruz really and Tamar hit against lefties, you know, just perfectly fine. So I'm not really too concerned about it. Obviously, it's not the most ideal thing, but uh, not really something I'm too concerned with. All against lefties, it'll probably look a little bit different. Something like Cam and Yero at second base, Taylor Santos DHing because Cruz just can't hit against lefties at all. And uh, Tamar has proven that he's probably not going to be hitting against lefties, and we'd like to get Cam and Yero in the lineup as well. While Cam and Yero against righties will probably be the backup second, third, and short, because he can play all those positions at least decently well. I'm also now remembering that we traded for Jose Miranda. This is what happens when I do these off-season videos in, like, multiple parts. I forget about guys like these. We picked up Jose Miranda, who I would ideally like to have. You know, he's not going to start for us. But ideally, he's a guy who sticks around on the team here. And then, of course, you know, we got, like, Rock Reggio, who will stick around. Jordan Lawler, who's probably going to start the season in AAA. Jack Losh is probably going to start the year in AAA, but he is an option to come up at some point. Uh, we'll just have to see how things shake out once we get into spring training, where we're uh, probably going to head our way there now. And I haven't really been showing these because, like, pretty much every year there hasn't been somebody making the Hall of Fame. But this year we actually do get two Hall of Fame inductees. Ichiro makes it in his third year on the ballot. And Todd Helton sneaks in on his ninth year on the ballot. Crazy stuff there. Uh, we can also see that Scott Rowland has dropped off, only getting 2.3% of the vote in his 10th year. Andrew Jones only getting 6.9% of the vote in his 10th year drops off the ballot. So just take a look at the 60 men we are going to have on the spring training roster here. Just going to scroll through this real quick. If you want to stop and see if there's any names that recognize or stand out, this will be where you do that. Alrighty, spring training is over. It's time to see who makes the opening day roster. <laughs> 